Hello everybody. This is a show dog, but he sure doesn't look like it right now. And that's okay. He's not gonna be showing for a few months. Mostly what I wanna do with him is uh, kind of winterize him and uh, kind of just get some things going to a point where they can sort of coast for the next couple of months so that um, I don't have to put a lot of grooming time into him other than some uh, maintenance clipper work just to keep him, you know, fresh and neat. My biggest stripping job on him this weekend is going to be to take this fuzz layer off. Something else that I want to do to winterize him, so to speak, is catch up all his clipper work. So that's face, throat, ears, rear, belly, pads of the feet. I try to do that once a month, even through the winter. That way, even if I let them get shaggy, they still look kempt, they still look cared for. If clipper work is something that you would like to know more about, I have a course available uh, specifically on maintenance clipper work. A lot of people have said that it's been very helpful for them, so I hope that it can be uh, equally helpful for you. The final thing that I'm going to do to winterize him is to uh, shorten the hair on his legs. It'll just get matted, it'll get dirty, it'll get pulled out by brush in my yard. All right, so those are the tasks. I'm actually going to start with his head because there's some particular parts about that that I want to go over with you. All of the places where there's a transition, so that's on your head here at that, uh, that arch, the zygomatic arch, it's a bony ridge right there. Also at the point where the stripped hair on the neck meets the clippered hair of the throat along those transitions, you want to always strip those areas a little bit before you clipper. These are areas where if we only cut the hair, then it grows back in dark, soft and looks different than the head hair than the neck hair and that soft line will migrate in the direction of where you want to maintain hand stripped coat it's going to start changing the appearance of the head and where you have the neckline it's one of the places that sneaks up on people novices especially that they don't realize cutting the coat there breaking the coat there is changing the overall look of their groom and they suddenly discover it and then they're not sure quite what to do about it. It's really important to go back to your fundamentals, lift up the hair, grab the tip, pull in the direction of the coat that it grows. Don't try to pull too much at a time. And if you grip the hair too close to the skin, if it's long enough, you're more likely to break it. So you want to focus on slow, gentle pressure. If you're having trouble gripping it, put some ear powder in it. So I'm just going to strip some of this easiest hair right here. I'm using a stone for this so I can pull a little bit more hair. I don't have to get it all, but I do just want to make sure that there's hard coat growing in going to sprout six weeks from today this long hair that I'm pulling along this transition zone and again I'm not trying to get everything it's okay to cut some of the hair on the transition zone in fact it's inevitable but if we can pull some what's easy what's long that'll help us in a couple of months all right so now I've got that transition zone stripped right here so now if i do clipper work right here it'll soften up a little bit of this coat still but i've got a bunch that's going to be coming in so i don't need to worry about that being a problem for me in uh, three to six months when i get ready to show him again we do the same thing on the back of the legs and again you can see because this hair is very long that it's pulled into Kind of little separate hanks of hair. These are easy to pull, easy to see. It's better if you don't brush through first. 
some of these areas, especially if you have a little bit of a softer coat to start with, they're a little more challenging to strip. If that's the case, you put a little bit of, sprinkle a little bit of ear powder in there. So I'm only taking a little at a time. I'm using the stone. It's a little easier on my hand. And again, I'm just focusing on that transition zone right now. Another transition zone is along the edge of the tail because we clipper the back of the tail, we clipper the anus, we clipper around the private areas. Looks like I stripped most of this tail just a couple of weeks ago. So there's just a few long sections right on the edge of the tail that have grown out since then. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull those transitions. It's good to do the outline first. Sometimes you don't know quite what you need to take out in the middle, but if you can strip the out, outside, the outline, it makes it more obvious what you're gonna need to do next, what's, what's gonna need to come next. Same thing on the other side. I'm just gonna strip this long hair that's right on the transition zone. I'm not trying to strip up into the leg. I'm really just stripping, oh, about an inch wide, um, strip down the back of the leg on both legs. It's important that you match on each side what you do. One of the hardest things to fix in a hand stripped coat besides it being broken is if the timing has gotten off between the two sides. When you start a stripping session, have a pretty clear idea in mind of what your game plan is the simplest thing, especially if you're a beginner, is just do one part and then go mirror that part on the other side of the dog. Okay, so now I've got an outline up his both thighs, up his sides of his tail. Excellent. And I'm gonna come over to this side and strip this side of his head to mirror what I did over there. Right. And you want to make sure his head is quite short, so there's not really much for me to strip here. And I also stripped his ears fairly recently. Um, but you do want to strip the area of the head around where you clipper the ears before you clipper the ears for the same reason. That's another one of those transition zones. Okay, so now I've got those um, transition zones done. So I can go ahead and uh, do that maintenance clipper work on him now. I'm gonna move quickly through his clipper work. Uh, but like I said, um, if you would like to learn more about the very specifics of where the lines are and how you do the maintenance clipper work on the face and the throat, and the ears and the rear and the pads of the feet, um, then grab the information that will be in the comments, uh, be in the description of the video about uh, the Clipper Work course uh, to teach you all of those techniques. Now you'll see when you get to it that there's a place where the hair on the throat is growing this way, but the hair that you're stripping for the jacket on the neck is going this way. So there's a place where those hairs come together like two streams of, you know, two, two channels. And what I do with the clippers is I identify where that hair is growing up and I try to clip her right along that line without cutting into the hair that's growing down. So I may have to do that in a couple of strips. And then any more of that I will uh, trim up with uh, my thinning shears. We do that on this side. And how far do I come down? Well, there is a um, there's an indentation right above. Here's his breastbone, and so right above that there's a little indentation. And I start my clipper work. I come down to just past that. So now I'm going to give that 10 blade a chance to uh, cool off. So I'm going to work on his ears now. I'm going to use a 15 for his, the outside of his ears. I was using a 10 on his face. 
kind of cradling him actually with this arm and I'm not putting pressure down on his head but I'm kind of restraining his range of mo motion, range of movement. And I just want to be careful not to cut into the hair on the, the stripped hair on the back of the head, on the side of the neck, if I haven't uh, done a little bit of pre-clipping or pre-stripping there. All right, now, uh, 10 blade again, or back here on his rear. Um, for a lot of dogs, understandably, the only time anyone handles them back here is when they're getting groomed or they're getting their temperature taken or whatever, but it's probably not from the dog's perspective um, a great reason. So, um, you know, when you pet your dog, include the tail, pet the tail, rub the underside of the tail too, so that there's some context there. That tail handling is not always, I'm doing something really invasive to you. Um, we have a choice about helping them learn that that, uh, that this, it can mean something other than something invasive. Now we're gonna go back to just some more stripping. Get this final shaggy layer off. Since we might be getting closer to him needing to have a break, I'm gonna make sure that I do a smallish area here on the neck to start with, kind of this quadrant here with a V down the very center of the top line. I'm gonna leave that in case I can only get to this and then the opposite side before he's too tired. I'm making the skin a little bit tight and I'm just pulling kind of one, one little lock at a time. This is also where I could use a stripping knife, but honestly for um, pulling hair that's long like this, that's pretty well divided on its own, into small segments. Um, I prefer the stone to the knives typically. Now when the coat is a little shorter, a little bit more like this length on his body, that's when I'm going to find probably a stripping knife is going to be a little more useful for me. It's okay if I leave a little bit of a fuzz layer. Um, if a little bit of the coat breaks, it's okay. I'm going to come back and, you know, do this again in a Oh, six, eight weeks, something like that. It, there won't be nearly as much of a layer to come off. As long as I work it every four to six weeks so that there's always a layer or two layers uh, growing in, then I'll always be able to, you know, decide within a couple of months that I'm ready to show him. Remember the hair takes like six weeks to sprout again once you pull it. So you really need to be choosing your shows three to four months ahead, and then making those your targets. One of the things I recommend is using a calendar or a planner to keep track of the work. I'll put a link to that in the description of the video also. All right, so I, I stripped down to about um, the point of the shoulder, right here in the front where we've got the upper arm comes there and the shoulder blade comes to that point right there. That's generally a good landmark to do your your maintenance stripping. Now I'm gonna do the other side because like I said, I wanna mirror the work I did on each side so that I don't get myself in a situation where I've done a ton of work only on one side of the dog and now I don't have the time or the resources or the dog no longer has the cooperation uh, to be able to let me do the other side with the same timing. All right, now I've got this long fringe right here on both sides that I'll probably, oh, I might go strip it just a tiny bit more, but then I'll trim that with the, uh, the thinning shears when I come back to do uh, finishing work. Okay, now since I've done the two, the two neck, sides. Now I can go ahead and do the center of the of the neck on the top line uh, down to this area that I, of the middle that I've already stripped. These layers are a good, oh, I don't know, this longer hair is probably a good inch and a half longer than the layer underneath. So it's really no difficulty to identify which hair to pull since I'm always aiming for the tips 
and the end of the hair, I'm not trying to grab it from lower down. If I try to grab this hair closer to the skin, that's when I'm more likely to bite into and make holes in the layer underneath. And those holes, those are the hard ones to fix because you know, you don't have anything immediately under that coming in and those holes tend to stay around for a while. If I try to take too much at a time or go too fast, that's when a dog can start getting fussy with you. So at the first sign or, uh, you know, if the fussiness really starts to get to be a problem, take a look at yourself and what you're doing. Are you going too fast? Are you grabbing too much hair at a time? Are you starting to try to get the dog to continue to work with you by force of will and uh, tone of voice and things like that? If that's happening, you might be pulling too much hair. You might be going too fast. You need to slow down, take fewer hairs at a time. Okay, so almost got these two sides to match. He's doing a really good job for me, so I am getting ready to wind down this session. Um, so now his neck is done, and I have his shoulder on this side still to do. I have the shoulder on the other side still to do, and I have his rear still to do, plus uh, toenails, final uh, thinner, thinning shears to blend, do the underline, um, scissor the feet. I'll take care of those. In the next winterizing part two. I hold the ear leather flat over my fingers as I clip her up. Then there's a line from the corner of the eye to the corner of the mouth. I prefer to hold, keep some hair on the end of the tail long to hold on to rather than.